and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the uncomfortable things you might be too afraid to ask about field work. I kind of want to be like your cool field aunt here and, and answer some of the questions that I literally don't think the answers to exist on the internet. So we're going to be talking about some probably pretty gross and uncomfortable stuff, so just a fair warning ahead of time. So this is relevant not only to field biologists, but other field scientists, geologists, field engineers, oil and gas workers, anyone who does a significant amount of their work uh, outside of a traditional office or lab setting. So where do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> So you might be lucky enough to get an old porta potty or a drop toilet here and there. If you're working at like a permanent field station, you're probably gonna have some sort of like drop toilet. Um, if you don't have electricity, that is. If you have electricity and plumbing, you might get lucky enough to get a little toilet. Otherwise, especially if you were in a roving work crew where you're moving around to site to site throughout the day, get ready to become very acquainted with peeing and pooing in the forest. Uh, you know, you might wanna bring Bring a little trowel with you so that you can dig a little cat hole which is the hole that you put your in fill that back up and uh, you want to bring an extra bag preferably not a see-through one to keep used toilet paper in because you don't want to bury your toilet paper leave no trace is applicable almost anywhere that you will go in nature so make sure you pack out all of your little sanitary items if you're on a boat uh, you might get one of the big boats with a bathroom like a research vessel will have a bathroom if you're on like a little skiff it's gonna be a lot easier if you're a man let's say that but for women you get the buckets a bucket you kind of squat over or try to stick your bum off the edge of the boat whatever uh, works best for you on that note if you're in a crew of all men and you are a woman and you are like oh my god what do I do just as the group's walking ahead um, just say hey I'm gonna hang back and go pee and then sneak out somewhere behind a little tree and have your business and they're not really gonna like check in with you and be like oh do you have to pee do you have to pee like you kind of just have to take it upon yourself to excuse yourself from your duties fun stuff the amount of women who seem to get like you know like actual bladder infections because they try to hold it in all day is too high because no one talks about this so please drink lots of water and excuse yourself to go pee somewhere do not try to hold it in for your whole field day on that note let's talk about what you do if you're on your period in the field so this one's like the worst thing so especially those of us who have a lot of pain and issues and fatigue associated with that time in the month it can be really really hard to do physical exercise and you kind of have to gauge it by whether or not you think it's safe for you to go into that field that day if you are in pain but you can like med yourself up get through it then the best thing you can do is bring an extra bag like I mentioned and pack out your sanitary products or a menstrual cup is like huge you can do that just bury the blood under like in a little cat hole and cover it with sand and you can bring a water bottle or like some sort of little squirt bottle to clean it same goes for going number two in the forest bringing a squirt bottle is going to help you immensely <laughs> so you're not like feeling disgusting afterwards if you legitimately like cannot work because you're in so much pain that is understandable and talk to your supervisor to try to get some relief there are some supervisors who will never understand calling out because of period pain i have lied about it before and i've said i threw up this morning i can't do it because i know that they're not going to let me take the time off if i was on my periods sucks but you know do whatever you can to try to get that time especially if it's not even going to be safe there's so many women who have like stories of passing out in the field because they were in so much pain and um, being in really unsafe situations so just take the day off if there's no way that you can do it you can take sick days in the field that is actually kind of one of my other questions for people just in general if you're really sick you can take a sick day in the field um, I try to reduce it to only like absolutely necessary I only do it when it's like a pretty big deal uh, just because I feel like taking too much sick days in the field could be like looked down upon but when you need it you need it so take it another topic is if you are alone in the field typically no unless it's like excessively safe 
for you to be alone, meaning you're working on the side of a highway in a city or something like that where it's relatively safe and there's no issues. Otherwise, you're usually with a field crew, at least one other person, especially if you are in grizzly or bear territory, especially if you're doing nocturnal surveys, you're almost always going to have someone else with you. It might not be another biologist. It might be like a construction worker, safety second, something like that. But um, if you feel unsafe in the situation and you feel like you need someone else with you, please speak up and request that safety second because that is standard for most field jobs. What about sexual harassment? What if you get harassed by someone on your job site? What if you get assaulted by someone on your job site or off your job site, a local or another biologist? Um, what do you do? Uh, this is so freaking difficult. I have had this happen to me firsthand multiple times and it is so important to first off look out for yourself if you are unsafe you need to leave um communicate that with your supervisor as much as you can and any good supervisor would support that and would support listening to your report of sexual harassment and sexual assault i hope that you get listened to and heard and action happens, but the reality is, is that it doesn't always work out that way. There is sometimes where a manager might just tell you, that's just part of being in the field. That's just part of the job. Horrible, but there are industries where that happens. Um, if this is happening to you, I will never fault you for leaving a job that doesn't support you when you are being hurt in that way. You should never have to deal with that. It is never part of the job. There is no industry and no job where sexual assault and harassment is acceptable and part of the job. So please do not think that ever. Please don't ever think it is part of the job because you don't ever deserve to have that happen to you. On a similar but completely different vein, let's talk about racism in the field. 100% happens. Racism outside of the field happens. It is very widespread, especially in certain industries that tend to be a breeding ground for it, to be honest. Oil and gas industry. You know, I obviously have not experienced this firsthand, but many of my coworkers very close to me have confided in me of things happening, and I have witnessed racism happening in front of my very own eyes. One of the work sites I was on, um, there was a bulldozer with a Confederate flag sticker on the back, and that was in Canada. Y'all need to do better. I've heard the N-word on job sites be called targeted towards other people. Of course, it should never be part of your job. I think any good supervisor would support you and hopefully that person who did it faces some sort of justice, but also realizing that does, doesn't always happen. So take the steps that is best for you, the victim of this. If your direct supervisor doesn't um, do anything, I would support you escalating it. Go above the supervisor. These are really important things. So don't be afraid to take it all the way up if no one is listening to you and hearing your concerns. Is it safe for women to go out into the field? I hesitate to say anywhere is 100% safe for women. That is up to your own personal risk tolerance, but I encourage you to try to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit, especially if the people who are telling you it is unsafe is like your parents who maybe don't have a good understanding of like the safety protocols that might be in place. If you have a really good program, a really good supervisor that supports you, the risks are very low. Um, that also goes towards like animals and wildlife. Usually you do have that safety second who's there with you to protect you. You have safety check-ins. You have personal protective equipment that will keep you safe. And there's so many things that could be put in place for you to be safe in the field. You just got to make sure that your company uh, has a good safety culture and respects that because you can see some red flags pretty much right away if a company doesn't have a good safety culture and that's not a company that you want to work for. What if someone asks you to do something that you're uncomfortable with? You can interpret this in multiple different ways but the way I'm thinking about it is say they ask you to cover something up that you shouldn't have seen or they ask you to not report something that you think it is right to import or ask you to compromise your personal integrity. That's something I've also learned the hard way. Your personal integrity is one of the strongest tools that you have as a scientist, an engineer, a professional. And by compromising that, I guarantee you're gonna have 
you know, those times in the middle of the night, five years from that moment where you remember that time and you're like, shoot, I wish I just stood up for myself. If you are doing the right thing, don't be afraid to tell someone to buzz off and that you are going to report something. It's just a matter of looking out first for your own personal safety. Um, it might be best in the moment to kind of try to step away as much as possible and say, hey, I need to talk to my supervisor before I do this, or I need to document that in my daily report, which is my go-to little like secret trick. Because if someone's doing something shady, they don't want you to write it in your field notes and in your daily report. When you say you're gonna write in your daily report, it gives them a little bit of a check to realize, shoot, I don't want my name associated with that. So there are some little tricks you can do there to keep it professional. I'll try to document everything that you do and just work with the best intent and the best integrity possible that you have. If you're unsure what the best decision is, um, some of the guiding factors that I recommend looking at is what is based on science and what is based on kindness. And if you get that inkling in your stomach that something's not right, feel free to reach out to your supervisor or another field staff to try to get a second opinion on what you should do next. Can you do field work if you are pregnant? Um, yes, but there's a certain point where it might not be safe for you to be in isolated areas, especially if you're undertaking like a six month field program in a remote area, it might not be the best suggestion, but uh, local stuff, especially stuff within cell coverage, proximity to a hospital, um, you know, not too much like heavy lifting or all the rules around that, uh, you can still conduct field work. Can you do field work if you have kids, um, young kids? Absolutely. There are new parents that I've ran into in the field all the time, not saying it's easy. I'm also not the right person to talk to you about this because I don't have kids, but um, there is a big push for moms in the field. So there are definitely ways to work things out with your partner or the other caretaker of your child to try to allow you to still do some field work even when you are a new mom or new dad. What happens if you get too tired in the field and you're hiking and you're just exhausted? There's definitely a level of like physical fitness suggested for field jobs, especially if you're doing a field job where you're like hiking quite a bit, but it's absolutely acceptable to take breaks. So there's some days where I just feel like I can't really hike much and it really sucks to try to push through it or maybe it's raining. Don't let it get you down too hard because sometimes you'll have really great days that will make you feel uplifted and happy again and make you feel like you know you're a fitness queen and it does get easier over time because the more you're moving around and getting used to those field activities the higher your physical fitness will be um, the less winded you'll get and tired and all that so it gets better through time I know like some of the field jobs I worked the first day I was just like sweating and exhausted but like two months later I was like peak physical fitness and that doesn't mean like anything about body shape that is like I could walk and hike without being winded and my like lung capacity was really good and I was able to lift my heavy field equipment and not be exhausted at the end of the day so it gets better over time do you have any other questions leave them down below if you could hit the subscribe button down below you can see more videos like this about what it's like to be a wildlife field biologist if you want to become a member of my patreon link is down below it is patreon.com wildbiologist thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you on the next one